Hey guys, welcome back to 3D Print Farm. As promised, we're going to teach you how to e angle a print in Chi2 Box to make your resin print super duper successful. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay guys, let's get started. So the first place you'll want to visit is Thingiverse and you'll want to look for an artist by the name of Mia K and her site is m3dm m3dm you can search by m3dm in the search thingiverse box and you'll pull up her thingiverse page and as you can see she has some amazing dnd prints that are absolutely free uh, if i click on the designs here you can see all of the different designs that she has. There's a lot of miniatures, a lot of different monsters, uh, characters as well. She does have a Patreon page. I happen to be a patron of hers and she has some, uh, as well as all of her prints, she has some additional decorative bases that are a, uh, a part of being one of her, a part of being a, a patron of hers. And also with the, um, her five dollar tier she actually includes the uh, the supports for uh, the access to all of her models with supports which is awesome so you don't have to mess with supports you just throw it into chi2 box and print away so anyway i i highly recommend her she's a fantastic person uh and i i highly suggest if you're into any of the DD miniatures uh this is um i highly suggest you check out her site so what we're going to be looking at today is the Haunted Horseman, the Haunted Horseman tabletop miniature. So let's get directly into Chi2 Box. And I am going to click this button up here. And this is going to open a file. I'm going to click on Haunted Horseman. And this particular one is from her patreon page and you can see the base is a little bit different than the one from thingiverse the one from thingiverse is a plain base this is the decorative base that i was talking about so you got all these awesome bones and artifacts and pumpkins on here on the base pretty stinking cool so this is her hundred horseman miniature i'm going to show you two different ways to print this miniature so first thing you'll want to do when you're in chi2 box is go to your settings button over here Depending on what printer you're using, I have both an Anycubic Photon and an Elegoo Mars. So let's say, for instance, you're using an Anycubic Photon. Under the print setting, you'll want to make sure that these settings uh, jive with the particular resin that you're using. And, uh, again, remember, resins are all different. They all have different properties. You'll want to set different exposure times for your resin. So make sure those are set up correctly. I'm going to be using my Elegoo Mars today, and here's the settings that I'm going to be using. When you're through getting those set up, simply click your X button and now you're back into the model. So the first way I'm going to show how to print this is just to print it flat on the build plate. So it's a miniature and uh, I found that small items, uh, especially the 28 millimeter miniatures, are very easy to print just straight up and down. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to rotate this guy a little bit because you can see he's kind of capes kind of hanging over the build plate a little bit. So I want to rotate it. How I do that is I click once with my left mouse button to select the model. Go over here, select this button, and you'll see these rings that are going around the object. I'm going to select the blue ring, and you can see it changes color a little bit. That's selecting the Z-axis. Hold my left mouse button in, and now I'm going to rotate the model on the build plate. So now when that's set up exactly where I want, I can click and drag it around with my left mouse button again. And that's just by clicking on the model and dragging it. So now it's pretty much centered on the build plate there. Move it over just a little bit so I don't get any supports on the edge. So that looks pretty good. I want to go over to my support feature. You'll want to make sure that your Z lift height is set to zero. If it's set any higher than that, what'll happen is you'll get supports that'll build under here. And since you don't want that, you want it to build flat on the build plate, just make sure that is zero. You can either do that by clicking the arrow keys, or I'm simply just gonna click once to highlight, just click zero, and now it's flop 
flat on the bill plate. So with that being said, I've got all my settings, top, middle, bottom, and raft uh, already set up. I'm going to post these settings at the end of the video with a JPEG so you guys can see exactly what my settings are for this particular miniature. At this point, I'm just going to click my All button, and it's going to go through and generate supports. All right, as you can see, the supports are already completed. And from all I'm looking at this, just from the eye, it looks like everything looks good. And you think G2 Box has done a fantastic job. And you think, well, that looks really good. I'll just, I'll just go to the print icon, and I'll print this sucker out, and it's, everything's going to be hunky-dory. Well, m maybe yes, maybe no. So what I like to do is I like to check to make sure that G2 Box has done its job. And how you do that is you use this handy-dandy slider over here. This slider shows exactly how the object is going to build on the build platform. So as I scroll up, you'll notice things are starting to build. I'm just scrolling really slow here. Things are starting to build on the build plate. I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of get a better idea of what's going on here. So you start to see things grow like so. And what I'm looking for now is I'm looking for islands. I'm looking for little bits of floating model that it what appears to be uh, that it's going to float and build on its own. Okay, do you guys see this over here? Perfect example of an island. This guy right there. Let me move around here. This. I'm sure it's part of his hand. Okay, no, it's his, it's his elbow. Okay, what's going to happen is, again, like we talked about before, is if you think about this, um, again, if you think about your model kind of like a puppet, and this puppet is dangling from strings, okay, each point has to be supported by a string. But you're basically printing this thing upside down. So it's kind of like a suspension bridge, right? A suspension bridge uses its supports to, from the object, the bridge actually hanging by the supports. And this is exactly what's happening here. Well, what's going to happen is this little island up here is not going to print because there's no support here. It's going to attempt to print in thin air, and then you will get nothing. If you get anything, you'll end up probably getting a flat spot on his elbow, which will look like crap, and you'll have to reprint it. So the best thing to do is catch it right here. So what you'll want to do is when you float your mouse over it, you'll see a little black, a little black circle appear like this. This is a good indication of an island. I just click once. Boom. There's my support. Support is built. And then now, when I go back and I scroll back through this as it builds, you can see now the island is, okay, now I got my island. Now it continues to build up. Everything looks great. So let me go back. And it's actually really cool the way that cape kind of builds out. That cape kind of builds and it just kind of flows into itself. All right, everything looks good. As you can see, everything is starting to build build up build up build up and then now you're done the thing is is it you know the, the, what's really great about this is there's some spots back here you're really not going to see when you remove these supports uh, any little pock marks you'll see any behind the cape so much there's a few under here which will be hidden underneath the horse's legs will be hidden underneath his belly so really I mean all in all there's very few supports here which is which is great and you know from the, from this point all you would do is go click here, click your slicer settings, or click slice once, and then it would slice the model, and then you would print it, save that file to a USB stick, put it in your Intercubic Photon or your Elegu Mars, and print. And this 3D miniature will print just fine. But now let's say, for instance, this object is larger and you want to tilt the model. Now I've done it, again, I've done this done this both ways, and I, again, I wanted to show you there's more than one way to print these objects. Now let's say that I've got this miniature on here. 
I want to make it just a little bit larger because I want to use this as a display piece, let's say on my desk. What you'll want to do is you'll want to click the um, You'll want to click the rotate icon. I'm going to rotate this on the base. And by making it a little larger, I can I'll click the model. Click here. And the X, Y, and Z, I just want to increase the size. All I have to do is go over here to the percent sign and just start enlarging it. And you can see that these are all enlarging at the same time. So I'm going to go, I don't know if I can go 150% or not. That may be a little bit too big. Maybe not. OK. That's going to fill up most of the build plate. But when you print larger models like this, what you'll want to do is you'll want to tilt them. Uh, you'll want to tilt them a bit. Uh, in fact, I'm going to shrink that down just a little bit more. I'm going to go about 130. Okay. What you'll want to do is you'll want to tilt it, the, the object, so that it builds upon itself. And how I do that is I will click on, my, click on the model, click my rotate tool, and I'm going to click this red circle, which is going to tilt it back. I'm going to tilt it back enough to where this base is going to have very few, if any, support on the bottom. So this is about maybe at a 45. And also, and, I've, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I printed this one before, is I want to rotate this cape until it's perpendicular to the build plate. So about right there. And I'll show you the reason why in just a moment. So I've rotated my item. Everything looks good. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to click my support button. I am going to lift this up uh, around three. Let's go. F well, let's go five millimeters. And I'm going to click the all button to add supports. All right, that's better. So again, what I want to do is I want to scroll through this and make sure that there's no islands that are just kind of growing into thin air. And everything so far looks good. Again, what it might, the idea is is you is you want the model to you want the model to um, build upon itself. Now I could uh, yeah, see you got that little hoof there, but he's I've got him covered by the support. And then now you can print him exactly like this. In fact, the model that I'm going to display here at the end of this video is this is how I actually oriented him on the build plate or oriented the model on the build plate. So again, there's 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 more than one way to orient your models. Uh, again, if, if your models are very large, any print that's very large, you'll want to tilt it. And the reason, again, the reason why you tilt it is because it, it, it tends to exert less force. Uh, I guess you would call it peeling forces because as the build plate lowers into the resin, and your resin is curing, if you have large surface areas, you have more of a chance that your model is going to peel or be distorted if there are large surface areas coming in contact with the build plate. But with this, there's actually smaller surface areas that are coming in contact. As it grows, you can see there's just small areas growing until everything is completely built. All right. I hope that uh, answered some of your questions about tilting your models. If you have any questions uh, in particular about orientation on the build plate, I wanted to make this just a short, quick video on model orientation. Uh, the next couple of videos that we're going to be talking about is, is how to actually hollow it, but I wanted to put that on a, a new video and not make this one extremely long. So I've had questions about hollowing. I've had questions about breaking up a large model into smaller pieces so you can glue it together later on. And we're going to talk about that as well. So again, I want to thank you guys for joining us here. And again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. I'll be glad you know, to answer any of them as I, as I can. And uh, please go visit uh, Mia out on her um, 
either her Thingiverse page, and if you if you build one of her models, post a picture. She loves comments and the makes, and you know, go visit her out on her Patreon page because she's an awesome individual, and I think you'll really enjoy all of her models out there. So, anyway, hope you guys have a great day, and we'll see you again soon. Hey guys, thanks again for joining us here on 3D Print Farm. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I know I did. If you haven't liked and subscribed, please hit the like and subscribe button down below. You'll get notified of all the crazy wackiness that's going on here at the 3D Print Farm. Like the cicadas. <laughs> Bye now. Thanks for joining us here on 3D Print Farm. If you haven't liked and subscribed, hey, please do so. Why are dogs working? The 3D Print Farm. As promised, we're going to talk about how to angle a model er, in 3D print farm. In 3D print farm? Hey guys, welcome back to 3D print farm. As promised, we're going to talk. Can't <laughs> talk. Can't talk. Hey guys, welcome back to 3D print farm. As promised, we're going to tell 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 you.